Hester the Brothers Cartoon Theater, everybody. I'm Alec. This is my brother Lucas. He's the one waving to you right now with a very expressive face. Dude, I feel like you're doing good. Are you doing good? Nah, I'm awful. Oh, I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm great. Right. I'm happy to hear it, bro. Uh, I'm really excited, everybody. I really enjoyed the first two episodes of Legend of Vox Naki. I really enjoyed the first two episodes of The Legend of Vox Machina, and now we are here for episode three. The reason I'm especially excited right now is because from what everybody's told us in the comments, this is the episode where the real-time Critical Role campaign kicked off. People who have followed the Critical Role web series for a long time, this is where they really got to see the stories that were played in front of their faces with the dice and the acting. It got brought to life in animated form starting here. Everything before this was not seen by fans' eyes, I guess you could say. So this is a turning point for the series, I think. I think that's really interesting because I want to know if I'm going to notice a difference. Is the writing fluid enough through the rest of the story that I wouldn't even know that this is when it really started? You know what I mean? It, I, I'm wondering if it's going to feel like I'm watching two different scripts. The first two episodes versus the rest of the series. To clarify, and please, everybody, correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding was that the first two episodes were a campaign that actually got played. It just didn't get recorded for people to see. Okay, okay. So potentially, was, was it two different stories, or was it like, this was the, like, story this, that preceded believe, the other one? I believe this was it, but if somebody in the comments could be nice enough to explain the exact roots to me, I know that people have sort of alluded to it in the first two episodes. I would appreciate the background. It's interesting, yeah. as we enter this space and really start enjoying this show, I'm curious where it came from. Also, like and subscribe. Yeah, definitely. If you're here by episode three and you haven't clicked it, now's the time. Start? All right, shall we? Amazon logo just doesn't have the girth of the Netflix. I'm sorry. It's just... The girth? The girth. It's a perfect word, so, let's be honest. I, all right. Hmm. Oh! Backstory? Question mark? Yeah! Is that the guy with the white hair? Oh, and... Hmm. You know it's, you know it's a flashback because of the blurred edges of the scene. Oh my god. Forgot to give a not family friendly warning. My bad. Oh my goodness. Quick reminder, everybody, this is an adult content show. Uh, I hope you already knew that. I really do. Oh, hey, this is the guy that I said was my favorite character. Yay, we get you, more. You did. I know, I know when I see him. I can just tell. All right. I like Scanlan. <laughs> We had a mysterious mask. Is there any other kind? Oh, that was a good line. I liked that. Ooh, is there any other kind? That's tragic. All right. Oh, and uh, we have uh, laid the hammer down on not skipping intros. So is there anything you want to say while the intro is playing? <laughs> Here's the timestamp if you don't agree with us on the intro philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> and I also feel like we really do learn a little bit more from the theme song every time. And I just yeah. really appreciate when a show goes for a full theme song and doesn't do like a three second intro. Yeah. Um, I mean like we're getting for, now that I we just saw that backstory, that looked like character foreshadow. I'll bet we're getting a little sure. bit more from these little character segments than we probably would have thought knowing with our int basic introductions to the characters. Yeah, do you think another thing that's cool, go ahead. Yep. Do you think that there is a character amongst this cast that's pointed to as a main character? Like a central figure, you know what I mean? Huh, that's interesting. To be honest, no I don't. I feel like they all carry an equal importance. And I yeah, think that's I, kind of the fun of Dungeons and Dragons, too. Yeah, I don't- I haven't gotten like a main lead feel yet. Good morning, everybody. Though it would be her. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Morning, Vex. Morning. Oh! Seven to two. Three to the this is not a game. What? Must do. We can't all be aloof tight asses, Drawl. I'm simply <laughs> suggesting you could all benefit from some well-practiced restraints. Emotions aren't meant to be bottled up. 
Maybe you should cut loose once in a while. I think there's an argument to that. Ah. Huh. Hello? Uh, Vox Machina. Are you here? They have a really bad security system. <laughs> Someone just like walked into their castle. Lady Laura. <laughs> She's unfazed. Hope you didn't feel the need to bring a housewarming present. I didn't. <laughs> Alas, I'm only here to remind you that Sovereign Uriel expects you at his dinner. Oh shit, that's tonight. Finally. <laughs> protocol Me whenever I hear that I have plans. It's more than a party. <laughs> Dignitaries from across the realm are here to form a new security pact. Wanna be my date? I promise to be on my best worst behavior. Gross. Uh, I'm okay. Lady Gross. Aren't you the gnome? The Isn't that, that your archetype now? No. <laughs> I played a gnome. Dignity. Mm. <laughs> Five? He was just at two. Oh yeah, that was a three-pointer. You see, the rules of ball tag are as complex as they are. Ball people. tag. I shall brief them on royal etiquette <sighs> and manners. You have my word; nothing will go wrong. And that little moment just ruined middle school for about fifty thousand kids for the next three years. Oh my god! <laughs> wow, was this true? <laughs> Oh wow, he's ready for ball tag. Charming <laughs> protocol. I actually kind of love that. Just follow my lead. Vox Machina, champions of justice, hunters of dragons, destroyers of chastity. Oh no! Right, let's destroy of chastity. Greetings and I love him until he says things like that. God. Do whatever. Is anyone supposed to get drunk from these things? Uh, I'm pretty sure they're just fancy shots, Grog. Two for you, and three for me. Mm. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? Doofus. What, what? You want to get freaky with me? So I don't even know you. You are a libertine and a cad. And I like it. <laughs> Reginald, what in the world? I just asked with a preview house. <laughs> He's nothing if not consistent. Diplomats are here from all over Taldori. Fort Daxio, Kaimal, Westron, uh, even... From Whitestone, Lord Silas and Lady Delilah Briarwood. Oh. So he's getting the most character backstory right off the bat. Ooh, That's a great okay, shot also. Shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great shot. The eyeline match, the fade. Ooh, what an eyeline match. The this narrow is even. This is where it starts. I believe these were the people that were at the end of episode two as well, weren't they? I... maybe? Percy, what's wrong? It's... it's them. Those fiends took everything from me. What do you want us to do? Murder them. something. Turia. <laughs> we can't. It looks like they're staying overnight. Why don't I make myself scarce and slip into their chambers? See if I can figure out what they're up to. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Well, but in case of trouble, we should have a safe word. Grog, suggestions? Right. The safe word is... Shenga. Shenga? Shenga? My safe word's mommy. It's not bad. My safe word's mommy. <laughs> and somehow you guys look worse every time we see you. Where's Vax? Oh, uh, he... Has the squirts? <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, if you'll follow me, seats for the sovereign's dragon slayers. <laughs> oh, I love that audio. Where's the? I want to see the recognizing eyeline match where like he sees. Oh, I think he. Oh, I think he knows he's there. Yeah. I, I feel that like smug maybe. disposition, maybe Attention, the indifference. Yeah. Uriel Taldore the third. Nothing like a dragon attack to bring us all together, eh? Thank you, everyone, ah, ah, for making ah. the journey. In. Casual <laughs> dinner table conversation. This guy. <laughs> we have Arda Dualajun, Master of Law. Percy. <laughs> Percy! Per Percy! He's just staring like a perv. <laughs> he said the bride okay. took Okay. Why is... <laughs> what does that mean? 
We cannot He's looking at his food. Prepared again. Mercy. Talk to us. Mercy. Percy's gone. I'm fine. Oh, yeah, sure. Percy, I say you just walk over to the Briarwoods, say hello to break the ice, then punch him in the face. Grog, <laughs> no. Yep. I don't hate Grog's idea. <laughs> have to wait. I don't hate it either. To gather some intel. <clears throat> I feel like you need a real good dice roll if you pulled that maneuver. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You better be rolling a 20. <laughs> Not that I really know how the science of the game works. Ooh, stealth? Is You'll learn. His... Stealth is his his character attribute. Yeah, I haven't played that much D&D. I've played a couple of games, but definitely not well enough to really know how the game works, I'd say. I probably need a little bit more experience myself. I definitely don't want to pass myself off as an expert. Yeah. Ooh! I don't like snakes, but I like that snake. I, I like a snake with an eye patch. <laughs> they just chase it out. Great, greatest guards ever. Oh no, a snake! Let's both run away from the I must confess, door. I was rather curious whether you would come. From a snake to a snake. Not return. In fact, I've it heard rhymes, so it's about important. They say no one travels in or out of your lands. Lies spread by drunks and knaves. If no one left Whitestone, would we be sitting before you, Sovereign? Perhaps. Hmm. Or perhaps I might be forced to send a garrison of troops to check on your city. You won't need to do that. Oh, the light touch. Oh, man. You are right. There's no need. In fact, Whitestone needs to be protected. Yes, Whitestone's independence is not to be challenged. That's a lot of power. Wow. She's like, favorite. um, what? That's <laughs> is anyone gonna say anything about that? That was pretty, pretty blatant mind control right there, huh? Anybody? Have we, we are... met before? Oh, <clears throat> oh, nope. There, there was an acknowledgement. We haven't met. I'm Vexolia. I'm so sorry. What was your name again? Delilah. What an absolute pleasure to meet. Good catch. The protectors of the realm. My husband, Silas. Sure. Oh. Uh, those are beautiful beads. I have a set just like. Did them. nobody notice him just shatter a wine glass? Yeah. Once you... <laughs> An empty one, nonetheless. Good touch. So usually that draws a lot of attention. You gotta clean it up. Be careful about it. You know the sound. Yeah, sound. It's mostly yeah. Ooh, maybe maybe at that point everyone recognized that there was beef and just wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> That's there you go. What is in this chest? A heart. A beating heart. <laughs> like what's in this in this chest? Uh, okay. Oh, That's a heart, okay. Alan. He's looking for emotion. He's finding himself. It's it's all metaphor. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder what that book is about. The official story is that the city was administered by the Dorolo family. This is awkward. Until they succumbed to a rare disease. I, I like the him. The truth is, we concocted that tale to protect their legacy. The sad reality is that the Dorolos oh. abdicated. They grew bored of ruling, and after their children raided the treasury, they abandoned their people. Uh oh. <gasps> Thank you, Sovereign Uriel, but I think we will retire for the night. Oh yeah, he knew. He knew the whole time. You're right. Enjoyed the company. Wow, what a salty bitch. Totally. <laughs> Excuse. Oh my God, his hand is bleeding. <laughs> Percival, darling, what did we say about emotions? You don't. Understand. Then help us understand. Aw, that's sweet. Aw, aw, aw. They're homies. Oh. Words, they the anime the glasses. Entire family. Oh, I mean, I guess that was implied, but I didn't realize <laughs> it was his family necessarily. 
I didn't really see that coming. Uriel was more pliant than even I anticipated. Wait a minute, was he not in the reflection? Am I crazy? Dude. Whispered one. That's interesting. The boy was unexpected. Could be a catch. I said he looked like a vampire last time. Yeah, you did. Uh-oh. I still wonder if we're gonna, like, lose a character when, I guess. <clears throat> oh, uh, beg your pardon. Oh. Just turning down your bed. Forgot if you see some... why I thought that. Pillow mints. So that was their chest with the book. Yeah. Oh, gosh, you're a handsome couple. Lost my train of thought. Good roll. Be right back. Oh. <laughs> Bad roll, come on. Not yeah, a not roll. a good roll. <laughs> stealth, stealth level two, man, not good. Percy, why didn't you tell us? <laughs> Ladies and lords, allow Scanlan Shorthalt to delight you with an after-dinner song I like to call Pull My Beads of Love. See, this is the kind of stuff I would do when I played the gnome. <laughs> and then you really hope for over a 16. <laughs> Oh look, he's looking! Ah, he, he knows what's up. Yes. You are a curious. Oh. And you look delicious. Oh, he's a vampire! Oh, does that mean this guy's dead? Or maybe or a become a vampire? I mean, we don't uh -oh. know how vampires work in this world. Dragons no. worked a hell of a lot different than I thought. Oh, man. Uh-oh. He made it. Vex. We have to move. We lost the ticket? Screw it! Frog! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dude, I don't think this guy's getting out of this. It's possible. Like I said, characters can die in D&D. &D. And if that were to happen... We would probably see a main character suddenly emerge in the next episode because the player would get a new character. <laughs> but I don't think I don't think that's the case. I don't here. think so. Yeah, that, that'd be a weird. See, I, I wonder how the narrative will change. Who survived? All grown up. Step on, bitch. Wow, he really ran out of bullets. That's so unfortunate. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I didn't notice a clear difference in the last two episodes to this one, but I'm except for that I'm more wrapped in the story, way more. I'm hooked. Totally. Like at least with what's going on with these people. I think not. I think the backstory goes a long way. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll get more from other characters too. But it gives me a lot to look forward to. Ooh. Oh, oh. Oh, shit. That ain't good. Ha! <laughs> oh, that is a blade. Um. You got a sword. Oh, that's cute. just taking sword cuts to the chest like it's nothing. That's pretty cool. I really like the way his character Whoa. moves. It's so distinct and different from every other character in the show. Yeah. Saying... Designing a good heavy's hard. You know, when you're, like, for real, when you're yeah. creating a battle system. And I like this. <laughs> Yes! Yes! Best scene of the episode, let's go! <laughs> the drunk man blushing, let's go! 
Let's go. Ooh. Oh, every cut the sword gets stronger. Whoa, what an awesome trait. That's such a boss level thing. I do want to know a little bit more about the lore and battle systems, but I'm sure we will. Sure. Less of a criticism, more of a, I'm looking forward to seeing this. Uh-oh. I'm genuinely afraid we could lose somebody. I don't know. I know, me too. I like that. I like that there's a sense of, like, any character could legitimately die. I mean, that could just be a lack of my knowledge about what's going on. Maybe that's not the case, but it feels like it. See, narratively, it feels like someone has to save her. Yeah, it's extremely unlikely that that could happen. I should clarify, but yeah, it can, yeah. It can happen. Go get the captain in the coin. Over there, Desmond. <laughs> Lady Briarwood, I did as you ordered. Your belongings are here. I'll drive. Thank you. Oh, his. Stop the cabbie. Okay, so. Come visit us sometime, Percival. You're always welcome back home. Oh, no bullets. Bruh, you need a Not bigger like, it gun. It wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> That's six shooter. You ran out of bullets twice, and you forgot both times. And you let them slip away. <laughs> Whoa. I, I didn't ever light. No, no. Yo, she just got super stabbed for you. You should probably relax. Oh, no. Don't do it. I mean, don't do it, but like, do it for your character development. Start talking. Why were the Briarwoods here? What were they after? I, they were invited, like you, by Sovereign Uriel. Silas and Delilah have never left the confines of Whitestone before. Why here? Why now? Somebody stop him. <sighs> Ooh, he's got demon Let's energy. See. Now. What the actual fuck? Holy shit, Percy, what are you doing? Please, I'm, I'm only a servant. They, they don't tell me anything. Please, oh, let's go. Please don't hurt me. Oh. Percy, stop. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Oh, jeez. Now your soul is forfeit. Halt right there! What is the meaning of this? Guards! Arrest Box Machina! Quickly! Go, go! Nobody move! Turn where we can see them! Woo! <laughs> they loved me in there! Oh, I was on <laughs> Wow, he's the one who rolled a 20 amidst all of that! Fuck! Wow! Talk to me. <laughs> well, that was my favorite episode so far. A, I said my favorite character was Percy. B, I remembered his name, which is a big I, big deal for me. Everyone should be thrilled. I'm not gonna say that they established him as like a main character or anything. Well, there's still time to come. Everybody might get their episode. Exactly. We'll get. Some, I'm sure we'll get at least some backstory for everybody. But it was cool to see some real character being drawn up for somebody, and the core of the current plot of the show being related to that person's backstory. Each of these voice actors, the people who play the characters in real life as part of Critical Role, the D&D session, they all write these backstories before everything starts. Yeah. Every one of these characters has one. And I think in a lot of shows, a lot of cartoons, or I guess any shows in general, it's rare to see a group of characters that all have a very deep backstory that's relevant to the plot. But the yeah. nature of this lends itself that that's a requirement. Every one of these characters was created with a deep backstory. And because the creators and the voice actors are the ones behind this show, it's like 100% confirmed basically in my head that we are going to get these layered stories behind each of them. And that's like <coughs> eight characters. And it's so cool to me. I love having a bunch of characters to care about. I wonder how much they are actually going to flesh out every character's backstory. Because think about it, right? You only have so much time yep. in a TV show. 
Um, Which is the reason that many shows don't do it with that many characters, to be fair. Exactly, I was just gonna say, like, the reason we don't have that much character development from a bunch of different characters, it's helpful to tell a story when you have a single perspective to look through. And I mean, I've seen shows that do, like, there's an anime called Durarara, where it's like, the city is the main character, and everybody is telling the story of the city. You can't have a situation like that, like, you could say that Vox Machina is the main character, like, everybody is the main character. Oh, um, I kind of think that is what we've got here, that's interesting. Yeah. But amongst that, we still, even in Durara, we still have characters that get more screen time. They might not be like main characters in the sense that they're established as a more important protagonist than others, but more screen time. And I like that we at least are getting more screen time and more development from some people because it's giving me the story that makes me feel like I'm not like this episode. I didn't really think that much about it being d and I was just lost in the story and that's what it should do for me. You talked about the turnaround between episodes two and three. I kind of wasn't expecting that much difference, but I think that the distinct difference because the fans of the show got to know these characters in real time starting with episode 3, mm -hmm. you kind of have to start the backstories there, because otherwise they would have been missing context. So it's mm -hmm. almost like the first two set up where the story is going, but now we're getting into what that means. For me, the cool thing, the cool takeaway for me for this episode moving forward is that the writers didn't let the campaign do all the work. There's clearly still lots of intentional writing being done and lots of narrative choices being made. And I love that, that's good to see. And I also think that it speaks to how creative all of these individuals are to have created this story almost on the fly in the first place. But I'm really excited to keep watching this. I'm like enthusiastic about it, <clears throat> and that's a good feeling. Yeah, I will say I wasn't that enthusiastic to see the rest of the show, I'll be honest. I thought it was okay, I thought it was fantasy, and I was enjoying it, but now I wanna know what happens. I'm very, I'm way awesome. more invested in the plot after this one. Partially because the character that I decided is my favorite was the guy who gets the focus. I'm not mad about that. <laughs> you did. You, you called it in the beginning. Um, yeah, and that mask, okay, we need to learn oh. some more about that. That Dude, moment also go. played perfectly, I think. I liked that he didn't take the final shot. I think that- Yeah, great, and yeah, the, great uh, outro, I mean, great outro. And now we have this big cliffhanger. They just got arrested. All of them got arrested, yeah. not just that one guy. Even the guy who was delightfully singing about sexual pie stories in this, inside. He, he's- <laughs> He's also no longer free, which is fascinating. <laughs> Let me know, hey, you guys tell us your predictions or spoilers, but tell us they're spoilers so we don't do that. Uh, and uh, just leave comments and subscribe. I'm here to get engagement from you so our channel does well. Help us.